Hey there, everybody. We are here in San Luis Obispo, and we're going to get a behind-the-scenes tour of Lazign. Did I pronounce that right? Lazign, correct. Like design. Cool. And we're here with Dylan. I am the worldwide marketing manager and technically one of the co-founders of Lazign. If you're familiar with their products, this is going to be a big treat. Let's head inside and, and yeah, see what you got. Check it out. Uh, this is Lazign's headquarters. This is where it all started. Super cool building. <laughs> we have our operations, worldwide operations, or accounting manager in there. And then we move into our marketing department, which is pretty much this whole area. Much like our product, we do everything in-house from you know running our ad campaigns, photo, video, um, doing all of our analytics. Was Again, this a, the original HQ or did you start somewhere else and move here? Technically, it started in the owner's garage okay. <laughs> um, in 2007 and it was just me and him to start with. Um, and then eventually, I think around 2008, we moved into the, just this building. We've since expanded to about four other units here. The owner's um, originally from Germany, so you'll kind of get a a yeah. little bit of a German aesthetic. Yeah, so. I, was, I was kind of surprised to learn that Lazine was based in San Luis Obispo because when mm -hmm. I hear the name, I think very European or, yes. or, or German. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of where that came, comes from. Cool. So, what do we have over here? Um, over here is the kitchen. I can offer you a coffee if you want. Mm -hmm. This is the this is basically the highlight of the tour. Is yeah. <laughs> machine. Well, let's let's end let's end it okay, there. We'll end it there. <laughs> we'll end it there. Um, I did pull out a very our very first floor pump prototype. So this is pre production, um, very rough, obviously. But um, for comparison, this is one of our more latest ones. Right. Um, so not a lot has changed. Um, we pretty much nailed it out of the gate. So is there a, a tool that you feel like um, people really associate with Lazine? Definitely the hand pumps was. I mean, we have some hand pumps that haven't changed since the first year. You know, we did the nice CNC machined aluminum design, the overlapping handle, mm -hmm. the integrated hose, and that really just kind of redefined that category. From yeah, a lot of the stuff that you do, uh, multi tools and pumps. They're fairly common bike products. How do you guys add value or what's the design special sauce that you try to infuse into these products? The big story is the owner, Mickey Kozacek, our, our uh, eccentric entrepreneur boss, um, was the original owner and founder of Truvative, okay. which is cranks, handlebars, yep. um, so very much cycling components. And he kind of took that and applied that to accessories. We were designing stuff more like a component rather than just you know an off-the-shelf plastic right. hand pump that'll last a year and fall apart. So. Uh, what else do we have here in the, that we can show off? Uh, this is marketing, so again, the marketing, marketing folks. department. Hi, marketing folks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Shower, locker room, so all the necessities for pre and post ride. Nice. Do you guys have a lot of bike commuters? Uh, yes. This is the R&D office. <laughs> Stranger danger. So this is where <laughs> we do the majority of our engineering. Okay. Um, we have design engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. All of the engineers. Um, we have some fabrication stuff for prototyping. We have a full workshop for tinkering around with, with new projects. Do you guys do any <laughs> uh, 3D printing when you do prototyping? We do, and I believe that one of the engineers set something up that we can show off. So this is where we do a lot of ah. kind of quality control stuff, and analyzing materials and whatnot. There's and a lot then, of science that goes on. <laughs> yeah, or microscope to look at uh, materials close, close up. And then this is our 3D printer, and it's actually printing one of our new, uh, we call it the multi-chain tool. The boxes of old prototypes and stuff like that. So this, like this is a, a pre-version um, of our storage flow cage, bottle cage and storage for multi-tool, patch kit, stuff like that. Was that, and but that was printed off of this? Yes, it's printed off of this, oh, okay. and there's been many variations to get to the final product. Pretty cool, I didn't picture that you had or use all this technology to make your product. A lot of bike consumers get a little cynical. They just think that brands slap labels yes. on, on random things, yeah. but it's cool to see that you do a lot of engineering uh, yes. in-house. Yeah, very much so. Everything's everything's done in-house. That's just, that's the philosophy of the, the owner. So we've got Dylan here whipping up some espresso in the line off, in the Lazain offices. So is this the, the side hustle? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna be judging. <laughs> is the coffee as good as the pumps they make? Yeah. We shall see. <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty good. I'm not a super like espresso drinker, so you know, yeah. but this hits the spot. Yes. So we're here with Nathan, the worldwide product manager at Lazine. Uh, what do we have here on the table? Uh, we've got an assortment of some of our products, ranging from some pretty early designs to uh, some of the new stuff that's come out. 
um, our newest floor pump, the Gravel Digital Drive Pro. Uh, I remember when this came out, very bold claims, gravel specific pump. What makes this gravel specific? People want to know. <laughs> uh, I would say nothing makes it gravel specific, um, <laughs> but the goal was to create a pump that would work best for gravel riders, right? right? Barrel diameter is the big driver in this. It's just a little bit larger than a standard road barrel. And then all the gauges are tuned um, for 100 PSI. The most accurate point in a gauge is gonna be around the halfway marker. Mm -hmm. um, so whereas like our standard row pumps, you use a 220 PSI gauge so that you're landing in your accuracy zone around 100 PSI. Right. Um, these use a 100 PSI gauge, so you're landing in your accuracy zone more around 40, 50, 60 PSI. Right. More, um, more supple tire pressure. Yeah. I know that you guys did some uh, refinements to the chuck head. Like what's going on here? Yeah, so this is our ABS-1 Pro chuck head. It's just kind of a modification of the thread on chuck we've always uh, used. And it's got an air bleed valve in the side. There's a valve core wrench in the back. Um, and then this one has two thread settings. So you have a Presta setting on one, which threads onto a Presta valve core. Uh, and then on the other side, it's M6 by 0.8, which is a, basically your outer valve core diameter thread. Mm. So uh, you can remove the valve core and then inflate a tire more easily if you're trying to set a bead for tubeless. And all of our floor pumps are fully rebuildable. And that's something we've always run with. Like we have replacement parts for every part in the pump. So if anything ever happens, you can right. always reach out to our team. There are lifetime pumps. I mean, we still service pumps that are 15 years old. What's the, the timeline for like a back of the napkin drawing to you know, product in the consumer's hands. And I know it totally varies, but let's say kind of a, a product that has average difficulty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, something like a tire lever could be like two months. Okay. I mean, it could be yeah. super fast. Uh, something bigger, you know, this has 15, 16, probably be 20 something components yeah. um, in it. So if somebody has to work on every single one of those things, it's gonna take a little bit longer. And then electronics, especially development takes a lot longer especially with chip lead times these days. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could range from two to 18 months probably. How, how many years out are you guys usually designing for? Do you have products you know, designed for two or three years out or is it still fairly? Yeah, cool? like I would say, I'm definitely working on 2025 20, projects right now. Wow. Um, we also do a lot of OEM development for yeah. lights with e-bikes, stuff like that. So um, as bikes, bike companies work several years ahead of time, so do we. Um, I have our multi-chain pliers here, which are like quick link pliers. Mm -hmm. uh, they have storage in the back for two quick links, obviously leverage so you can open and close quick link. Nice. Quick links, there's a rotor truing tool on here. Piece that makes us unique is that we have a chain breaker on here, but when you're trying to get leverage and push a chain pin through a chain, ah. uh, which as they get narrower, it seems to get harder. Um, yeah. So you have some leverage here that you can crank on the chain with. This is our Mega Drive 1800, which is kind of our flagship light, most powerful light that we make. Uh, As you can see, these two are paired. So every time I change the mode on the front light, uh, the rear light can change in mode as well. So through a phone app, you can tune all of these so you could have just a few different mode settings, like a high output setting, a daytime flash setting, and a low setting, so that your front and rear lights are changing with just a single button push and you have your modes tuned to specifically what you need. This light, I think, has 11 modes right now, which is obviously too many for most people, <laughs> um, but there's probably three modes in there that you specifically really want, and your neighbor might want three totally different modes. So right. we allowed you to tune that. So as the products get smarter, <clears throat> do you guys have to expand the team to, to include more software engineers? And We have a pretty robust, um, you know, programming an EE team, especially because we make GPS products as well. Yep. Um, so because of that, I mean, we make all of our own boards and do all of our own EE design in-house. What would be the main advantage of having it all like vertically integrated, like everything just, just works well? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to talk to contractors or anybody right. outside of the business. Everybody is like well connected. You can just walk to right. the next desk <laughs> next to you and talk to a person about it. It's not like a meeting that you're having with some organization that's doing your board design for you. It just makes it all super simple, the more of it vertically integrated it is. So have you guys been um, affected much by the supply chain issues? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sore subject. <laughs> because we produce everything we make ourselves, I think we are somewhat protected from that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of companies in the bike industry, which you mentioned in the other room earlier, was 
like a lot of people just slap labels on stuff, which is not something that we do. Um, and so when you're slapping labels on things, you're working with some factory that's working with issues and, right. and suppliers that have issues. So um, since we have that all under our own roof, we do protect ourselves from that a little bit, but still like chip shortages. I mean, we have 18 month lead times for chips and some things and right. like aluminum can be hard to find in the types of aluminum that we need, like the alloys we need might right. be difficult sometimes. So um, we definitely suffer from that, but I think we do a better job than most other people out there who are, are dealing with contracts with other companies. Yeah, so we have a few pumps here. These are kind of our three newest hand pumps. Which would be the best for a gravel bike is, is what the audience wants. Uh, well, that's going to be dependent on what kind of gravel you're riding, what kind of pressure you're running in your tires, right? right. Because there are gravel rides around here where I'm running 45, 50 PSI in my tires, and there's right. gravel rides around here when I'm running 22 PSI in my tires. So. Um, I'm usually in the no more than 30 PSI range. <laughs> yeah, so for that range, the high volume version would be the best. Okay. Um, but yeah, these are just our new line of super compact pumps. The Pocket Drive, Pocket Drive Pro, which is a full aluminum construction, and then the Pocket Drive High Volume, which is a larger barrel diameter. So mm -hmm. you can achieve, obviously, higher pressure with less pumps, right. uh, but you max out at a lower pressure. They've been really successful for us, especially with the expansion of like internal bike storage, mm -hmm. uh, being mm -hmm. able to fit something inside like yeah, the swap box are... on your specialized bike. Or these things are tiny. Giant. They fit really well in your pocket, and they still work super well. How do you guys come up with product ideas? Do you have um, like a brainstorm? Yeah, they come or... from an assortment of things. Uh, a lot of us here are cyclists, so we run into the issues and wants and needs that every cyclist runs into, right? Everybody comes up with ideas, and those get pitched in different ways. Sometimes it's on a ride. Sometimes it's when we're fixing a flat. Some, sometimes they come from people DMing us on Instagram right. or something <laughs> like that. Uh, and we take everything into account. We put it on sheets, but a lot of people have ideas and they're not all uh, great. So <laughs> there's what? a lot of stuff to, to work through. Yeah. Not with great ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of our biggest values here and something that we try to push for is a value proposition for mm -hmm. every product. So we look at what else is in the marketplace. Right. We look at what they're offering people at what price, and we basically just try to beat that. So right. um, if you look at any of our lights, any of our tools, the products you compare them to, if somebody has the same offering of stuff, we want to have higher quality at the same price. If somebody has um, you know, more features, then we want to beat those features. We want to get past that and provide that at the same price or less. Well, thank you, Nathan, uh, so much for letting us know about the d design process. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Uh, I know for me, it was a real eye opener. I didn't realize that you had all the science in the other room. Yeah. You know, people make assumptions about what brands do and it's cool to see that you guys really, you know, do a ton of stuff in the house. Yeah. So definitely check out uh, Lizine on the internet. So you guys are on the grams. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, don't forget to support the channel by checking out the merch store. Join us on Patreon. And as always, keep the supple side down. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>